Hey gamers, Ranger Tony here, and unfortunately, my last playthrough of Pathfinder Kingmaker, Ranger Tony's terrific Toxophilocracy, is no more. Uh, after the upgrade to 1.3.0 of Pathfinder Kingmaker, for some reason, my saves are corrupted. I don't know what's happened. Um, I even tried going back a few saves can't get them to work. So I'm starting a new playthrough. Uh, if you've been following chronologically with the videos that I've been making, I have recently made some videos on rogues and I had been trying out a what I'm calling my rogues gallery uh, of a party of all rogues. And I've got to say, you're going to be surprised. They really kick us. I mean, it is it is just unbelievable how well they work. So I'm going to roll up a new rogue. This is going to be a knife master. It's going to follow the exact build of my trippy sneak attack halfling knife master rogue that I've put up. With one exception, I'm not going to play a halfling. Um, only because... You already have a halfling in your party, in Lindsay. Um, and so I'm going to do something a little different today. So we're going to start a new game. In the main story, naturally. We're going to leave it on normal level. Um, I'm going to take the crits off again. And I'm going to remove the negative effect on rest. I'm going to leave... No, I'm going to put them as normal enemies that do 100% damage. Uh, kingdom management, I'm going to do effortless, and we're going to take off the tutorials. Later on, as I've done with other playthroughs, once we get to the full party of rogues, we're going to take uh, we're going to take this option here, which only gives our active party members experience, just so they level up a little bit quicker. So... Let's do this. Uh, I'm going to pick, not that one, this one, this rogue here, this uh, or um, half orc here, sorry, as my character portrait. Um, so we're still going to get an extra skill, um, which is good. The intimidating plus one bonus to persuasion, uh, we're not really going to use that. We're not going to be using the Orc Weapon Familiarity either. Um, the Ferocity might be nice. But I'm, I'm really picking it because there are no... Well, there is. I mean, there's Regnar, isn't there? Regnar or whatever his name is. Um, I just like Half Orcs. I don't know why. I suppose it's the whole underdog sort of thing. Is there a skin that's just a little bit... No, it's too blue. Trying to match the skin tone in the portrait up here. Yeah. I think we'll just stick with that one. He is in the dark. Um, that face will be fine. I'm going to go with the... Ooh, there's four body types now. Tall and thin. So you've got buff sort of small and thin, really heavy, and tall and thin. I think I'm going to take this tall and thin one, actually. I didn't I didn't notice that that was in there. Um, what is... Oh, that's, no, that's number one again. What is that beard? That's... But it's nothing. Uh, I think I'm going to keep that beard. The hairstyle, um, I think it's this one that I've been going with previously, which is close-ish to his. Um, I suppose that's sort of close too, but his actually has like that little top knot at the back. You know, the very... Uh, yeah. So we'll go with that. Rogue Knife Master. Um, so again, exactly like our, uh, well, 
close to our halfling. We're not going to have the extra point in strength. So we're going to go straight to 18 with dex, 16 with con to give us that extra bit of health, 13 with intelligence. We have two points left. They're going to go into charisma. Perfect. Um, same set up here, except we still have an extra point, so we're going to put that into Knowledge World. And then it's going to be debatable whether we always bump up Knowledge World or Persuasion, because um, we're going to have level about where we've got six or seven points. Is it seven? Three, six, seven, yeah. Um, so we'll see about that. Uh, exactly the same setup as previously, so two weapon fighting. By the way, if you're taking a human, the, the thing I would recommend then taking is toughness. Gives you an extra hit point per level. Um, so, you know, why not take it? Um, and it helps you at the start because it gives you a buff of extra three hit points, but you don't get those, ec you don't get an extra hit point per level then until after level three. Um, but yeah, it, it all works out in the end that you end up with just one extra hit point. So that's going to be that. Um, I did actually briefly think about taking martial weapon proficiency as well so that I could use the Kukri rather than the dagger as my primary weapon. But I'm not sure if there's any decent Kukris in the game. So instead, I'm going to stick with the dagger. Look, if I really want it, Later on, I can swap out one of the feats that I had planned to take and switch over to the Kukri um, and do it that way. So, you know, it's just a minor change to the build. It, it would still work. Um, I'm not going to put a voice... Actually, maybe we will put a voice in. Hmm, I didn't think of a name for this guy. Um, well, actually, I think I will use this name. Pierce. I'm not going to give him a last name. Because he's using a dagger, he's going to be Pierce. Um, if I haven't... I'm going to have other um, rogues, of course. I haven't decided yet. I think what I might do is do a another human knife master and let him take martial weapons to take kukris and then the third rogue will probably just be uh in the front line anyway will probably just be a standard rogue who i will give um light maces to um, and he'll probably have toughness although it might be better to make him the thug after all and i haven't really decided if i want to have two more rogues using ranged or just uh, because I'm going to have Lindsay as well so I haven't really decided what I'm going to do there um, I need to think about that a little bit more as the, the episodes progress but um, I'm going to have the uh, Eldritch Trickster or whatever, whatever they're called the other rogue type that can cast spells and they're going to be one of my ranged attackers Lindsay will be another um, and I'm trying to decide whether to have a fourth melee or a third ranged um, because the melee guys I mean the ranged ones do sneak attack as well but the melee guys are just absolutely slaying it in the previous playthrough I was doing so Okay, I'm going to speed through a lot of this, even like normally I don't zip through all of the combats, but I might be zipping through some of the combats, at least initially here, until we pick up um, Jahir or someone else who can do some more um, ranged attacks, uh, sorry, melee attacks with me, because that's when the rogue really starts to shine. Um when he is helping by flanking someone else and then can just sneak attack, sneak attack, sneak attack, sneak attack. Um, so that's the plan there.
Okay, let's do this. Um, okay, so this guy's going to be very easy. Um, it's actually strange because they don't mention in the sneak attack, it doesn't mention anything about getting a sneak attack like Pillars of Eternity, right? Uh, sneak attack is anytime someone is flat-footed, hobbled, sickened, blah, 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 or the first two seconds of combat. And I notice in particular in this fight here, I always do sneak attack in that first attack. And I don't understand why. It says that he's flat-footed. Why is he flat-footed? I don't know. Uh, is it because... I beat him at initiative? Is it just that that first guy is always flat-footed for some reason because he doesn't expect you to attack? I don't know, but it's really good to see that we do a sneak attack straight up. Bang. Uh, kill him with one shot. So we're getting his dagger now. So we're going to take that, we're going to put on the chain mail, and we're going to swap the punch dagger for his dagger um i don't know if i was if i was sure that there were better punch daggers there were good enchanted punch daggers in the game i would have actually stuck with punch daggers and used those all the time just because they're something different um and they triple on crit rather than double but as i said in my knife master play uh walk through you know tutorial build video You know, worrying about crits and stuff like that when you're playing a rogue, you know, or trying to get just those couple of extra points of damage per hit, it's not really as important because it's the sneak attack damage that does it all for you. It's the one that, you know, is sure, you know, those extra two or three hit points of damage that you might be doing by leveling up certain abilities, they may actually be the difference between killing an opponent and not killing an opponent in any given battle. But I feel the more attacks you can get in, the more chances you've got to sneak attack. And that's what I'm focusing on with my rogues. Okay, so this battle here will be fairly simple as well. So again, we snuck attack there because he was flat-footed. And, and I don't understand why he's flat-footed, but I'm not complaining. It's nice that we were able to sneak attack. And I think... Oh no, that last one wasn't a sneak attack, it was just a normal hit. Um, so yeah, I think I'm probably going to um, speed up through this even through a few of the battles, unless there's something really interesting in one of them in which I might show them more. But most of the time, it's not going to show off the the rogue, the knife master, too much until we get some more melee characters that I can work with to flank opponents. That's when it's really going to um, do that. So I'm going to speed up this a little bit. I might, through this playthrough, I might you know, uh, zip past a few more combats than I normally did um, and just show some of the really tough ones, just to progress it along a little bit, because I know a lot of these uh, playthroughs are, are taking a bit of time, but we'll see how we go.
What the hell? That was weird. So that frost giant used his cone of cold and it did nothing for like 10 seconds and then the guys fell down and died. Yeah, okay. So even this 1.3.1 branch is a little bit buggy. Okay, hopefully this will go a little bit better because we now have two melee attackers. So let's see how we go with sneak attacks. None there yet, a little bit disappointing, but I've been missing. There we go, sneak attack 12. It's a nice, that's a nice amount of damage there. Basically full damage from both. Casey did it. I was wondering who did the damage to that. That's fine. Ooh. Just 
Thorn. 44 damage. That's why she uses the scythe. Man, that was a huge hit. And I just did... Was that a... That was a critical sneak attack. Critical hit from Valerie, and then sneak attack from me. That was like three or four sneak attacks in that battle by just one rogue. It's pretty good. Look at that, we've all got our levels already. That, oh no, I suppose that normally happens. No, it normally happens after you talk to Oleg. I think we might leave it here and at the start of the next episode we'll level everybody up do all of this and do this final battle here um, hopefully this hasn't ended up being too long an episode uh, as I said I will be continuing to skip through some of the really simple battles uh, I'm going to concentrate on the larger ones for a lot of this stuff just so that uh, we can get through the playthroughs a little bit quicker maybe but uh, yeah, I hope you will enjoy this. This is my Pathfinder Kingmaker Rogues Gallery playthrough. Um, if you did enjoy this, please give me a like and share this video amongst your friends. Make sure you leave any comments below and uh, subscribe so that you can see all of the upcoming episodes. Thanks a lot. Bye.